Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jason, I'm your watch guy today. Today I am reviewing a micro brand from New York. Now this micro brand comes from the brain of a brewery owner. This is the MTK Chronograph. Now it is packed with a VK movement. It is solid stainless steel 316L and it is now on pre-order on MTK's website for $299. Now this one came to me in a very strange fashion. Um, I was receiving a watch from another brand, uh, but the reviewer that had it prior to me made a mistake and sent me this instead. So I contacted MTK and said, look, I've kind of got your watch in, um, where do you want me to send it? And they said, well, it needs to come back to New York, but if you'd like, you could review it first. I think that'd be great for all parties. So yeah, I jumped at it. Cause it was, it was actually quite nice. Like the color, colorway that they have, the, the accents that they have on the dial actually really suit my type of likes and what I go for in a watch, to be honest. So, let me turn this camera around and let's get into this review. So this is the MTK New York Chronograph. Now it's not the smallest watch in the world. This is built in full 316L stainless steel. The diameter on this watch is 42 millimeters which is perfectly acceptable for most people. It is 13 millimeters thick. Lug to lug is 49.5 millimeters and the lugs are 22 millimeters wide. Now it's packed with a mecha quartz movement. However, on the website, they've listed this as a Hattori VK64 mecha quartz movement. Now I'm not very familiar with Hattori, but I imagine that it's very similar to the Seiko. Uh, VK64 Mecha Quartz, I, I don't know if it's just a different supplier or something like that. But as you can see, we do have that really lovely Mecha Quartz sweep on the chronograph hand as it comes around here. And a very efficient snap back to the 12 o'clock position. Now it's a very simple shape on this watch. We have a classic circular design with the lugs hanging over the sides here. Now the top of the watch has a circular brush including the lugs around the sides here. The finishing on it is actually quite nice. Around this fixed bezel here, we also have a circular brushing effect. The crown to this side is actually quite a large one. It is not screwed down. It is just a simple pull push crown. Now it's not a dive watch, so we can't really begrudge them not having a screw down crown. I really do like the piston styled chronograph pushers either side of the crown here. I like that type of design. It gives me a racing feel, almost like a stopwatch, especially if you tip it this way. It definitely looks like a stopwatch from the side, doesn't it? We have the MTK logo in the center of the crown, and that looks to have a radial effect on it, as well as the pushers here and here. So the finishing on it is actually quite nice. We have a lineal brushing finish down the side of this watch. We do have a polished edge around the edge of the bezel, which is nice as it breaks up the side profile of this watch. As we flip to the back, you can see that it's a screw down case back on this one. We have a circular brushing finish on the center also with the MTK logo etched into the center. All the usual specifications that you would expect on the outer edge of the case back. As we move back to the front of this watch and we tip it to the side, you can see that it's really lovely dome effect sapphire crystal built onto it. I really love this crystal and it has a nice effect on wrist. It distorts the dial quite nicely, as you can see there, almost magnifying it in some aspects. Really, really nice finish on it. Really nice effect to it. It also flows very nicely with the bezel shape itself. So it's almost like it's one piece now, this watch is provided by this case with a hundred meters of water resistance, which is probably what we would expect from a chronograph, a racing style chronograph. As we move into the dial, you can see that is a flat white dial and it's very simple in design, but it does have some nice little features to it. We have applied indices at the hour markers with a printed black minute track surrounding the dial just inside this chapter ring. The chapter ring has a really simply printed tachymeter display on it, which again is very suiting to a chronograph watch. And it really does give a nice type of depth effect 
to the watch itself. Either side of the handset, you can see here that we have two sub dials. This one here is the 24 hour indicator and this one is the minute indicator for the chronograph. You can see that we don't have a second hand on this one. Now a lot of people don't like not having a second hand on a watch. However, personally on a quartz watch, I prefer it because it gives you the illusion of a automatic movement and I, I quite prefer that. As you can see down at the six o'clock, we have the date window and that's very pronounced. It's very easy to read. It also matches this dial very well. So I think this is probably the dial color to go with. Also at the six o'clock, it gives a nice symmetrical type of effect to this dial, especially when we only have two sub dials. Up at the 12 o'clock, we have the MTK logo printed onto the top of the dial. As we move on to this handset, you can see we have a loomed handset, stainless steel brushed outer edges to it. You can see it's a sort of sword type of effect, but more of a flat type of sword type of effect. And we have an arrowhead chronograph hand on here too. The two sub dials have a very simple orange hand that barely accents the black sub dials very well. Now the overall feel of this watch is that it's a very easy to read chronograph watch. It's very simple in what it does, but it does it well in my opinion. Now let's move on to this loom shot and see how this one's doing. Now this is a prototype, so we would expect the loom to improve in production models, but let's see how it's coping at the moment. Just give it a nice little blast with the UV torch so we can see where we are at with this one. So you can see the indices are also loomed. Now the loom is an all right standard, I believe it's BGW9 on this one. Now, one thing that I would like to point out is that in person it's not as pronounced as it looks on the camera itself. Uh, the indices are starting to fade. The hour and minute hand are actually pretty well done. There's no blotchy type of scattered paint on the loom of this one. It's, it's well applied, evenly applied at that. Now as we move on from that loom shot, we move on to this here band. This is a Barton watch strap. Very nice leather, very nice feel to it, very subtle. We have really lovely orange stitching down the side of the band and at the lug points here. That gives a nice accent to these sub dials. It, it plays very well with them, I believe. Now, we have a polished buckle on this one and two keepers. The band does not taper at all towards the tip, as you can see here. We do have plenty of adjustments though. Let's pop this on wrist so you can see what we're dealing with. So this fits actually really well to my wrist. Now I didn't expect it to fit that well because when I got it out of the, the packaging, I actually thought that was quite big. Uh, obviously 42 millimeters is rather reasonable, but it does give an effect of a bigger watch. I don't know if it's because of the height of it or the dome sapphire on top. I don't know what it is, but it does give the effect of a bigger watch. Maybe the strap not tapering. One other thing to mention is that these will be supplied with this strap, but also with a stainless steel bracelet. So that will be a nice added extra for you guys. As I say, $299 dollars on their pre-order campaign at the moment you will be you'll have to be quick to get onto that one although that is 50 dollars off the actual retail price now i have a couple of moans for this watch a few niggles i guess a few things that i would like to see improved the loom i didn't expect to be outstanding but it's very much in the realm of an aliexpress type of watch it, it's not the best in the world it'll kind of do. But if you're spending $299, you, you don't want that to be the opinion that you have of the loom on this watch. You want it to be a, a good level, really. Moving on from that, I don't know why it's so thick. I mean, 13 millimeters, but that's quite a hefty size for quartz movement. Obviously, we do have this dome sapphire. It, I just feel like they've packed a little bit of height in that they didn't really need to pack in there. Maybe to give it more presence on wrist, but I'm I'm not the biggest fan of giving the watch more presence on wrist if it doesn't need it. And finally, my last gripe is probably the price. Now, I understand that it's a micro brand and it's an original design. However, I, I don't think 
that much design has gone into it. It's, it's a very simple watch. There's no exotic materials. It's a quartz movement. Granted, it's a mecha quartz movement, which is always nice to see. It's an improvement on the regular quartz. I just don't know if it warrants $300. The thing that gets to me at the moment is I think of watches that I compare it to, compare the price to, and I got my Zelos Swordfish for cheaper than this, considerably cheaper, almost $50 less, in fact. So I don't quite know if the quality and design is there for that price range. That's just my opinion, obviously. Everyone will have their own opinions. But yeah, that, that's my settling point on this one, unfortunately. Probably not something that I am going to add into my collection. But for someone who wants this type of design from a micro brand company, a mega quartz movement, it would be quite suited to you. Just not my cup of tea. So guys, that's my review of MTK's first watch, their New York chronograph. As I say, just the, the price point just isn't there for me. I, everyone's going to have their own opinions. And maybe this will sell in its droves, maybe it won't. It is pre-order at the moment. I believe each colour is limited to 50 pieces. So they're, they're quite limited. Obviously, there's going to be a selling point that it's a New York company based in New York and, you know, it's called the New York Chronograph. Maybe that's a selling point for people over there. Personally, not for me, unfortunately. MTK have actually been very generous in the time that they've given me with this watch, so I would like to thank them for that. And if you would like to pick this watch up or pre-order it, I have linked their website in the description. So thank you again, MTK, for letting me have some time with this piece. And I look forward to seeing what comes from you next. I genuinely do. Please remember to subscribe to the channel, guys, and I will see you in the next one.